So let's see. Let's get this going. First things first, who's excited about this topic? I appreciate your enthusiasm. You're all liars. This is terrible. And this slide should scare you to your soul that I would actually do this talk. This would be terrible. I would hate myself. Uh, no, we're going to talk about really good stuff today. Um, come on. Is it the lag? We're going to talk about the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Any Yankee fans, Yankee fans in the audience? Yeah, you guys are screwed. So, actually, no, because as you know, there's a lot of suffering with this team. So, there's going to be a lot of Yankee high points in this very sad presentation. Uh, all right, so we'll start at the beginning. I'll try and run through this really quick because um, I know I've only got 20 minutes. Um, so, in the beginning, uh, the team was founded in 1901. It was part of the new American League. At first, there was only the National League, and then some guys kind of said, hey, we can start our own league. Kind of like if the XFL really took off and then challenged the NFL and said, we're going to play you guys. Um, they were originally called the Boston Americans um, because they had to distinguish between the other National League team. Uh, there was another uh, Boston team. Um, that was already in Boston. Uh, nicknames back then were actually pretty informal. There was more allegiance to the colors of the team than there was to the name of the team. So uh, the nicknames were moved around all the time. They didn't even bother to trademark any of them. Uh, they changed to the Red Sox starting in 1908, um, literally because this was the first time they could actually wear red without colliding with the other team in Boston. And the reason they went with socks, there were older teams called the Red Stockings and all that stuff. The reason they went with socks and even spelled it S-O-X is because the banner headlines of the day, it was a real bitch to get Boston Red Stockings and then actually have a point to your headline. So they just needed to shorten it. So that's what they came up with. Uh, the first modern World Series was played in 1903 and they won. They beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, it, oops. Damn it. Um, it was the, we call it the first modern World Series because this was the first time there was actually an American League and a National League, so it's kind of the way we know it now. Um, that's actually a picture of the, uh, one of the first games that was played at the World Series. And a few things that I found interesting about this is this is the actual grandstand. This is before the game, so everyone's hanging out. One, people just ran all over the field. They didn't really care. Um, this is the actual grandstand for the game, and this is the outline. Sorry, am I in, in anybody's way? Um, this is the outline of the outfield where, you know, you could actually hit the ball into play and it was just roped off. So if a ball was hit into the outfield and, ro and rolled into the uh, crowd, it was a ground rule triple. Um, and it just sounds really weird. They just roped it off. And this happened all the time because think of in a normal baseball game, how many times a ball hits off the wall? Well, that would be a ground rule triple. In four games, there were 17 of them. Uh, so just kind of a really weird way to do it. Um, so uh, the Red Sox actually were quite dominant in the beginning. They uh, pretty much won. Uh, they won in 1912, 1915, 16, 18. And then there was the event. Uh, there was the sale. Um, in late 1919, actually didn't effect, take effect until 1920, um, the owner of the Red Sox, Harry Frazee, I think I'm saying that right, uh, sold Babe Ruth famously to the New York Yankees for $125,000. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, actually, he sold a number of Red Sox players. So this guy actually owned the Red Sox, but he also, um, he was really big into kind of like the Broadway scene. He financed a lot of plays. Um, and he sucked at both. He was a terrible financer, couldn't run the Red Sox, couldn't run these plays. He was losing money constantly. So to kind of help both of these, he started selling off all the really good Red Sox players, the one most notably, uh, Babe Ruth. Um, so contrary to popular belief, a lot of people always say that he just sold them off to finance a play. It's not true. He actually did have an intention to finance some of the team. In fact, he was trying to get uh, shoeless Joe Jackson from the White Sox, but uh, there was the Black Sox scandal where they rigged the, uh, the World Series and that kind of put the kibosh on that. Um, so this sale was the start of not only the Red Sox going into complete and utter collapse for 86 years, 
Um, but also the rise of the Yankees, because basically all of our great players went to the Yankees. Um, and this was kind of the genesis of the Red Sox-Yankees rivalry. Um, this, uh, like I said, the, the fallout from this would be felt for 86 years and actually over time even became known as Uh, the curse. So for 86 years of Boston suffering, heartbreak, loss, and, and you know, as kind of a, you know, another knife in the back, unprecedented Yankee success, this became known as the curse of the Bambino, Bam, uh, the great Bambino, or Bambino was Babe Ruth's nickname. Um, contrary to popular belief, it was originally, originally just considered a curse. No one had ever really called it the curse of the Bambino until about 1990. Uh, a Boston sports writer named Dan Shaughnessy uh, who sucks and is a jackass, uh, <laughs> actually gave it this name. He wrote a book called The Curse of the Bambino. Um, now, it's, it's kind of hit or miss. You'll find a mix of Red Sox fans that actually did believe in this um, as to whether or not this truly was a curse. And we'll go over reasons why they actually thought this really was a curse. And then there were others that were just like, eh, we just have bad luck. Or, um, I don't know, maybe we just really suck. There's nothing to blame it on. We're just terrible. Um, so you'll find a mix of Red Sox fans that do and don't really believe in the curse. Uh, but it is unquestionably, there were 86 years of god-awful events. So here's kind of an overview of those 86 years by the numbers. So for the Red Sox from 1903 to 1918, they won five of the first 15 World Series played. So they won a third of them. Uh, same time period for the Yankees, 1903 to 1918. They had won zero. In fact, they hadn't even made it to any... Uh, World Series events. Uh, in the 86 years after the sale of Babe Ruth, the Red Sox only even played in four World Series and they lost all of them in seven games. Uh, for those who don't know, most of the World Series were best of seven series. So to lose them in seven games means this is the worst way to lose possible. Um, Likewise, the Yankees in those subsequent 86 years played in 39 World Series and won 26 of them. Uh, they now have 27. That is an ass kicking. Yeah. Um, and that is twice as much as any other team. Um, the Red Sox, on the other hand, would not even finish above 500. They lost more games than they won for the next 15 years. They would not even win a pennant again, which is to win the, National, or the American League that they were in. Uh, for 27 years. It wasn't even until 1946. Uh, on the other hand, through 2013, the Yankees have had the best all-time regular season winning percentage. They have the third most Hall of Fame players. Red Sox are at 14th. Uh, and the Red Sox... Sorry. <laughs> this is my talk. I can boot your ass out. If you... right. The Red Sox would not even win a World Series again until 2004, 26 years later. Uh, but it wasn't totally bad during the curse. We have very lame highlights. Um, 1941, Ted Williams hit 406. Uh, that's the last player to hit over 400 in a season. It hasn't been done since. Uh, 1946, hey, we went to the World Series. Uh, we lost, but we were there. Uh, 1961, we signed Carl Yastrzemski. Uh, he was a Triple Crown winner. Uh, in fact, last guy to do it, other than uh, it happened again in 2012. Uh, future Hall of Famer. 1967, we had the impossible dream year. We were expected to do nothing, but we did really well, and we went to the World Series. We still lost, but we were there. Um, <laughs> same thing with uh, 1975, we went to the World Series. Yes, we lost. Uh, 1986, this is when things get good, but really bad. Um, we did go to the World Series in 1986. We lost, we're gonna talk about this. Uh, 2003, even worse, because I witnessed this. Um, five outs away from the World Series, we lost. We are absolutely going to talk about that. <laughs> but then again, there was, well, there was a lot of bad during the 86 years, and this is where the curse comes from. Uh, 1978. <laughs> this is not me swearing for no reason. This is... And John will back me up on this. This is his name in baseball. 1978, Bucky fucking Dent. Uh, so at the end of the season, the Red Sox and the Yankees tied. They, they finished with the exact same record. So they had to have a one-game playoff to see who got into uh, the real playoffs. 
Bucky Dent, this scrawny little no-name, no-nothing, whatever Yankee player, um, was a terrible batter. He batted ninth. Why did he bat ninth? Because he sucked. Um, he couldn't hit anything. Um, in his 12 years in the major leagues, he hit 40 home runs. That's not a lot. Um, and he was just terrible. He had no power. He had no anything. Uh, this is my favorite bullet point. This is notable because he sucked at hitting and he was as weak as a little girl on muscle relaxers. <laughs> Out of nowhere, this guy blasts a three-run home run uh, to beat us in this one-game playoff. The Yankees go on to play the or to win this game and then move on to the playoffs. This was crushing because where did this guy come from? This guy had no right to do that, frankly. <laughs> and and it was the Yankees, again, you know, kind of, uh, kind of beating us. Now we move to 1986. This is where things get really ugly. Uh, this is also known as, you can go up to any Red Sox game and just say game six. They'll punch you, but you can mention it. Um, or you can say Buckner and they'll punch you twice. Uh, so this was 1986. We're actually in the World Series. It is game six. We are one win away from winning the World Series. Um, this was going to erase, I don't even know how many, 60 some odd years of losing, whatever. Um, the game goes into extra innings. Um, uh, and then in the top of the 10th, we score two. That's pretty good. We've got three, we're three outs away. Uh, the Mets end up going on to tie it with two outs. And then. So this is the run where they tie it. Okay, so that's the tying run. Great throw. Mookie Wilson, greatest name in all of baseball. Yeah. So, one of the weakest hit balls I've ever seen. Goes to Bill Buckner, the first baseman, the first base uh, player, rolls right between his legs. Simple grounder, didn't get low enough on it, rolls right through his legs. Stunned, we lose the game. Uh, and then the subsequent night, uh, the Mets won game seven, and uh, ta-da, we lose. Again, went seven games, lost. Uh, Buckner, because of that play, got death threats. Uh, he was basically run out of Boston. This was actually really serious. He was never forgiven for that play until about 22 years later. Uh, he never set foot back in Fenway Park, where the Red Sox play, for 22 years. Um, 2008, opening day, he came back to throw out the opening pitch. And it was basically the first time that they could actually guarantee this poor guy's safety. <laughs> now, he was greeted with a standing ovation for reasons that we'll get to later and everything. But basically, since this was after we had won the World Series um, and you know, sort of like things were forgotten. It's kind of like, okay, we'll let you live now that we've kind of erased the curse that you helped carry on. So, not a good day. Okay. <laughs> 2003, Aaron fucking Boone. Also not swearing just because I can. Um, this actually is, this is almost deja vu from the Bucky Dent uh, situation. This one was agonizing. Uh, this one brings grown men to tears. It is the 2003 ALCS, a very good Red Sox team against a very good Yankee team. Uh, eighth inning, we're up. Pedro Martinez, hands down my favorite Boston Red Sox pitcher ever. Um, pitching amazingly, but he was spent. He's done. He's, he's looking weak. He's throwing slow, everything. It's perfect. The manager, Grady Little, gets up to go out to get him, and this is perfect. Turn it over to the bullpen. We'll get him out. We're, you know, things are going well. We've got the lead. Great game. Grady Little goes out to talk to him. They talk, and you see that scene right there will forever be etched in my memory. Because you think any sane human being, even any non-sane human being, would still pull his ass out of this game. Grady Little gives the ball back to him, turns back around, and goes back to the dugout. Does not pull him. Um, everything goes to hell after this. Pedro starts giving up run after run after run. This whole time, he gives up base hits, another run, another run, another run. Grady Little, the manager, leaves him out there the entire time, never pulls him. Clearly, this guy's arm is about to fall off. He cannot throw. Leaves him out there the entire time. 
the game goes tied and we go into extra innings. Uh, 11th inning, Tim Wakefield, and I want it noted, Tim Wakefield sucks. He is a terrible Red Sox pitcher. I wanted his head posted at the city limits as a warning to anyone. If you ever pitch like this, this is what's going to happen to you. And then... That's Pedro. That's Tim McCarver. He sucks too. <laughs> yeah. So that was the end of 2003. Once again, game seven to the Yankees. Heart wrenching. And Eric, people actually refer, like uh, Bucky Dent, people really do refer to him as, when they say it nicely, they say Aaron F. Boone um, or Bucky F. Dent, but people really do call him Aaron fucking Boone. Uh, same thing though, not a powerful hitter, not a power, power hitter. That was in fact his first at bat of the night. They brought him in to pinch hit and that was the first pitch of the night that he saw. Gone. I think the ball's still going. <laughs> then came 2004. And once again, it's the Yankees. 2004, American League Championship Series. This is going to decide who goes to the World Series. Again, this is a best of seven playoff. Uh, so let's go over games one, two, and three very quickly. Game one, we lose 10 to seven. Game two, we lose, a little more respectable, three to one. Game three, I don't even know where to start. Uh, <laughs> we lost 19 to eight. I was beside myself. In fact, I remember that night. I was, it was a Saturday night. I was going to my brother's bachelor party. <laughs> I'm already depressed that my brother is marrying this horrible hag of a woman. She's <laughs> terrible. She's terrible. Anyone would say this. Like the devil would look at her and be like, her? <laughs> um, she's terrible. So I'm already bummed. Then I'm checking this game and we're just like, it literally looks like every time I refresh the game, they just tack on another damn run. I'm beside myself. I get shit faced. I get so hammered at this thing. It's terrible. I was, oh, it was horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So as of this point, the Yankees just need one game. Uh, by the way, we need to win four in a row and they're in the World Series. That was what the Daily Sports News had said about us. We were the Dead Sox. Uh, and I did not totally disagree at that point. Uh, here's the problem. Uh, game four, a little history. No baseball team ever at this point in Major League Baseball's then 135 year history had come back from an 03 deficit to win a game, uh, seven game series, ever. Never been done 135 years. Our last game, we just lost 19 to eight, which is a football score, not a baseball <laughs> score. That's sad. And it's the Yankees for Christ's sake. So this sucks. All right, so yeah, woohoo, game four. But we actually win game four. It was an incredible game. Uh, we tied it up in the ninth, extra innings, David Ortiz, love him. Uh, two run home run, awesome. That's him rounding third, amazing game. Game five, we actually won that too. Uh, this actually started only 16 hours after game four ended. Game four had gone on so long and this started so early, well, relatively early on the next day, there was only 16 hours uh, from first pitch to the end of the last game. This one even went 14 innings and was just short of six hours long. I don't even know how these guys were still standing. We won this in the bottom of the 14th inning. Also, David Ortiz hitting a, a single, scoring Johnny Damon. That's him cheering there and that's Jorge Posada, the, uh, the Yankees catcher, uh, going home to cry as he should. <laughs> Um, then game six, this is a very, another very famous game. It's called the Bloody Sock Game. Um, what happened was Kurt Schilling, one of our ace pitchers, um, had actually gotten injured, I want to say game one. 
um, actually tore the sheath. You have tendons uh, along, along your ankle and the sheath that holds them in place, he just tore it, just ripped it. So tendons are just kind of dangling there. Uh, he actually barely could walk. So what they did was they shot him up with a real lot of pain meds. Uh, and then they actually sutured, this was team doctors, not even uh, like, you know, they didn't call in like, you know, Dr. James Andrews, who does a lot of famous surgeries and stuff like that. Boston team doctors came up with this idea, never been done before, sutured the tendons. They literally just said, well, you know, they're loose, so let's just tie them to some other crap in there. And, you know, it's, he'll be fine. I mean, you know, you don't want him to move. All right, well, we'll staple them down. Um, so they literally did that. They sutured the tendons to some deeper tissue, some bone, and all of this other stuff. Very not good idea. Um, but he said, I want to get out there and play. I want to do this. Uh, and we, need, we really needed him. If he hadn't pitched this game, we probably would have lost. Um, so this was also the A-Rod slap game uh, for you lousy Yankee fans in the audience. You will remember A-Rod's very manly play of running to first base. And when he saw that he was going to get tagged out, not wanting to get tagged out, he just slapped at the ball like that. Uh, very cool. Yeah, he was called out because that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> now, we actually won this game 4-2. to two. Um, Oh, also I should mention, there are a lot of people who think that the bloody sock was actually like gamesmanship on the part of Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling was a very, very fierce competitor, still kind of is. Some might use the term asshole, um, but since he was on my team, I call him a fierce competitor. Um, if he's on any other team, I can't stand the guy. Um, so a lot of people think that the bloody sock wasn't real. What had, what had actually happened is over the course of the game, these sutures and these tendons actually started getting loose. You put an extreme amount of pressure on your ankles. They started coming loose and started bleeding through his tape and his sock and all this other stuff. Some people think that was kind of rigged by him. Uh, they're called crybaby Yankee fans. Uh, so of course, no, that is true. So game seven, uh, this was the route. This was a glorious game. Yankee Stadium, uh, Red Sox just started off hot and never looked back. Second inning, oops. Uh, second inning, Johnny Damon hit a grand slam. That was just glorious. That's a picture of him doing it right there. Um, so in, in one swoop, what made this game so great, even though it was slightly anticlimactic, we won 10 to three. It was great to finally beat them decidedly. Um, we beat our bitter rival in the biggest way possible. We actually made MLB history in the process because no team had ever done this in 135 years. Even better, the flip side of us making history is that the Yankees now have the record for the biggest pathetic collapse in MLB <laughs> history. And it was handed to them by the Red Sox. So, um, so uh, for those of you paying attention, this is actually the ALCS. This isn't even the World Series. So guess what? Oh yeah, we actually had to go to the World Series and play the Cardinals. After the Yankee game, you're kind of going to go one or two ways. You're either going to be so spent from that series that you're just going to get your ass kicked, or you're going to go the other way, and there's just going to be no such thing as competition anymore. You just had the biggest battle baseball's ever seen, uh, so everything else is going to be cake. And that's exactly what happened. After the Yankee series, the Cardinals were a joke. Um, we swept them four games to nothing. Um, and if I remember right, we never even trailed in the series. The Cardinals had never even taken the lead on us, even at any inning at any point. Um, some people call this anticlimactic uh, to people who have suffered for 86 years. Literally, there are human beings that were not even around to even remember the last time the Red Sox had won the World Series. Um, so to those people and everyone who's gone through the roller coaster, they've lived through Bucky Dent, Buckner, all that stuff. This, this was just beautiful. Um, so the aftermath, we could finally, uh, finally breathe. The curse was lifted, if you believe that there actually was a curse. Um, uh, even today, Red Sox fans still have this pessimistic attitude about them. It's kind of like you love them and we're more than willing to talk about how great they are. But in the back of our head, we're always like, mm, yeah, but they could really screw us over again because they did for 86 years. <laughs> so we still do that even today. Um, as a side note, there was actually, uh, there's a group of Boston comedians um, who put together, this was right around the time that those MasterCard uh, priceless commercials were uh, um, really popular. So there was a group of Boston comedians that actually put together this parody video. $5,000, my stereo, my TV, my car, my house, I can do anything. Go Red Sox! A motorcycle, my firstborn kid, anything. Seeing the Red Sox win the World Series, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. $5,000? Oh, crap, I wanted serious! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, 
2004 World Series champion Boston Red Sox and reminds their fans that we have them all on stage. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was pretty good. Uh, okay, and then to just speed up, oh, and we also won the World Series in 2007 and just this past year in 2013. Uh, 2007, we beat Colorado. This year, we beat the St. Louis Cardinals again. Also, growing up in Chicago and being a semi-Cubs fan for the National League, I love seeing the St. Louis Cardinals lose. It never gets old. Um, oh, yeah, and fuck the Yankees. <laughs> so, uh, and that is all. Hopefully, I didn't go over too bad. Oh, that was pretty long, actually.